ladies and gentlemen, are central banks secretly trying to crash the markets? That's the question I have a lot of subscribers ask me right now. A lot of investors are thinking maybe the central banks around the world actually want to crash the markets because people, what they're doing or the actions they're taking is going to lead to a huge stock market crash. And I've already got some data today that shows that the economy is also crashing. So for all those people that thought central banks would stop hiking interest rates in 2023 or start lowering interest rates to come there to save the day, well, people, I'm afraid you're going to be mistaken. So everyone, the question we're wanting to know, what exactly will central banks keep doing in 2023? How bad will the crash get? And I'm also going to go over some new huge economic data that just came out right now that shows the economy, like I said, is going from bad to worse. So everyone, this is definitely going to be a good one. So let's not waste any time, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get straight into the news, the facts and the data. Okay, so first things first is this, everyone. The ECP, uh, the European Central Bank, has hiked interest rates half a percentage point as Lagarde warns of more such moves. Because what happened yesterday, we just had the Federal Reserve, they came out and they lifted interest rates by half a percentage point. Now we've got the ECB doing it, uh, and now we also got the Bank of England doing it as well. Look at this, Bank of England says inflation may have peaked as rates hit 14-year high. The UK central bank lifted its benchmark lending rate by half percentage point to 3.5%, the ninth increase in a year aimed at taming soaring prices and the highest level since the start of the global financial crisis in 2008. So that's right, everyone. What we're seeing right now is the highest interest rates we've seen since 2008. But you know what's going to make it much worse in 2008 is debt is so much higher. People have got used to interest rates at 0%. They've got used to interest rates only going down over the past 30 years. But now what we're about to enter into is a prolonged period of higher inflation and higher interest rates. And this just may be the first round uh, of interest rates going up, like what we saw in the 1970s. The lifted interest rates dropped them a little bit, only to increase them higher, drop them a little bit, and to increase them higher again. And they hit a peak of around 18% in the 1970s. But what many people are focused on is what central banks are doing with interest rates. But there is another even bigger risk, people, and that is quantitative tightening. That's when central banks that printed all this money uh, or that brought all these assets like bonds and mortgage-backed securities, well, instead of buying them, they're going to be selling them. And that's going to cause these asset prices to crash. And unfortunately, what uh, this is going to lead to is a lot of people's pension funds own these assets. We saw what happened in the UK where their pension funds nearly got margin called, and this is going to cause people's retirement funds to completely collapse. So back to the ECB, uh, the ECB lifted the deposit rate more slowly on Thursday to 2%, but again, people, they're still going up. Uh, it doesn't matter the speed, they're still going to the same destination. Pledging to push borrowing costs significantly higher, officials widen efforts to tame prices with a decision to shrink their $5 trillion uh, bond portfolio starting in March. And again, people are getting very confused on what a Fed pivot is. They're thinking, well, they're going from 75 basis point hikes to 50 basis point hikes. That's a pivot. No, people, that's not a pivot. That's just slowing the pace of the rate increases. But again, they're still going to go to the same destination, minimum 5%. And if inflation doesn't go down, if we get some more black swan events, like, say, for example, more shutdowns in China, uh, more global conflicts, escalations with other countries next year, it's going to cause inflation to surge again. Now, again, people, what you have to know is these interest rate hikes have a lag effect on economic data. So we haven't even seen the results of how bad uh, the economic effects are going to be from these high interest rates because they've been risen so fast. This is one of the fastest rate hike cycles in history. But over the next six months, we are going to get more data. But guess what? We've already got some data today to show that these interest rate hikes are already having a significant effect on the economy, on consumers, and on the middle class. So this is a good economic indicator to show that manufacturing and that production is going to slow. But we also got data today that shows consumption is slowing significantly as well. So look at this. Overall value of purchases decreased 0.6% in November, and 9 of the 13 categories fell, including autos and furniture. So this is not just a small miss, everyone. This is a huge miss. And remember, inflation is making things more expensive. So even if people were buying the same amount, uh, US uh, retail sales should still be going up. But no, they're going down even when prices are going up. 
And this is also happening at a time when normally spending is quite high. Normally people in November, they start shopping uh, for the holidays, for Christmas. And this is showing that this is going to be, I think, like I've been warning about, one of the weakest uh, holiday season sales in history. And what this is going to lead to is weaker and weaker company earnings. And what we're starting to see in the stock market now is the risk before was inflation. But people, if we do actually enter into an official full-on depression, do you know what's going to happen to inflation? Inflation is going to plummet because people aren't going to have the money to spend. I'm not saying inflation is going to go down anytime soon, but once we do enter that deep uh, depression, we are going to see inflation go from high inflation to deflation. The report suggests some loss of momentum in consumer demand for goods amid high inflation, as well as what's been a shift in preferences towards services. While rising wages and pandemic era savings has helped support shoppers, Americans are beginning to feel the squeeze. The savings rate is near record low, and like I've been talking about people, credit card balances have surged. And with savings going down, debt going up, this is a recipe for disaster. Now, another big economic indicator they keep on talking about is, while we're not in a recession, is they say, well, unemployment rate's so low. Well, people, the reason the unemployment rate is so low because we're having a huge demographic shift. Uh, a lot of the baby boomers are retiring. Millennials aren't having kids. Now, I think what we're going to happen is we're going to see the population continue to get lower and lower, and the supply of labor is going to get lower and lower unless they ramp up immigration like crazy. So yes, while the official unemployment rate is still low, we're seeing the participation rate go down. And if you actually uh, included everyone in the US, you would see the unemployment rate is much higher uh, than what they're reporting, I think at least 15%. So listen to this, everyone. November includes some of the biggest shopping days of the year, and retailers offered widespread discounts across a range of products like toys, clothing, and electronics on Black Friday and beyond. Separate data from Adobe uh, Analytics found online spending during Cyber Week Thanksgiving to Cyber Monday was up 4% from last year. So you're starting to get the picture, people. Central banks are still lifting interest rates. The big risk is going to be when they start selling or start selling more of the assets on their balance sheet. We're starting to already get the data that the economy is crashing and we've got some more insider or should I say some insiders are starting to sell their stocks at record pace. Look at this. So Elon Musk, he's selling when he told investors he wasn't going to be selling uh, any more Tesla stocks. So he sold another huge chunk of Tesla shares. So listen to this. Tesla CEO Elon Musk sold about 22 million more shares in his electrical vehicle business, which were, which was worth around $3.6 billion, according to a financial filing out Wednesday night. Now, again, people, he told everyone, don't worry, I won't be uh, selling any more stock. But we're starting to see again and again and again, he's forced to sell more and more Tesla stock. Maybe he's getting margin called on the loans that he took out to uh, acquire Twitter. He's losing millions and millions of dollars from Twitter. Hopefully, he will be able to uh, turn it profitable. And I do like what he's doing with Twitter, trying to promote free speech. There is some other questionable things going on, but that's a topic uh, for another video. But we're going to see more and more people, like Elon Musk, CEOs, they're going to be dumping stocks when they get margin calls uh, on these stocks. And also what this is signaling, I think Elon Musk knows that when we enter into a recession, well, we're going to see the auto market, the car market absolutely crash. What I'm seeing as well with used cars, Tesla uh, used vehicles are some of the cars that are down the most. They're falling about 6% over the past quarter. So that shows that people may have brought into the hype of Teslas. Maybe they got it and they thought it wasn't as good uh, as they thought it would be. Or also what I've thought about and what is going to be happening is uh, after the holidays, once people's credit card uh, debt gets so crazy, now that we see that US inflation, uh, US savings rate is down at all time low, we're going to see a lot of for sales. People are going to be selling cars, boats, RVs. So if you're shopping for a car, boat, RV, uh, whatever, if you're shopping for some toys, well, those people that didn't go out there and take on debt, those people that didn't buy or FOMO in the peak of the market, you're going to see some huge discounts in 2023. So be good time uh, for saving some cash. I'm also looking to buy a new car, but I'm waiting because I know there's going to be a lot of forced sales. I'm already starting to see it. Let me know down below if you're starting to see it. I'm driving around. I see a lot of cars uh, for sale. People parked out the front of the house. They have a for sale sign on. A lot of people park their uh, cars on the main road. It says for sale. I'm starting to see that pop up more and more. Also, a huge risk for cryptocurrency, I think, is Binance. Binance is saying they're fine. 
while uh, the other day Binance temporarily halted withdrawals of stablecoin USDC as investors concern mount uh, after the FTX collapse. While the cryptocurrency markets have slightly recovered about 10-15%, What's going to happen is these uh, proceedings for these companies that are going bust, there's a lot of assets that are frozen that are going to be sold. So I think there is going to be a lot more sales pressure coming and we're going to see more dominoes fall when a contagion of the FTS collapse continues to spread. And on top of this, we got another warning from the man himself, the bear lord, Michael Burry. So look at this tweet, everyone. Early 2002, investors were asking me why I wasn't buying world.com. And he says, it feels like that now. And that's exactly right, everyone. We have these huge bear market rallies and some of the biggest rallies in the stock market or some of the biggest one percentage, uh, one percentage day moves are when we're in a bear market or some of the biggest crashes we've seen in history. And a lot of people, they FOMO back in. They think, okay, we've seen the bottom. But what have we seen again and again and again in this market since the start of the year? We've seen it decline. Then we've seen a rally of around 10 to 15%. Then it declined lower. Another rally of 10, 15%, and then it fall lower. And what I think is going to happen in 2023, because what we're in right now is we're in a fight between the markets and the central banks. The markets are saying, don't crash. Don't uh, keep lifting interest rates. You're going to crash the markets. We're going to enter a recession. But central banks, the only way they're going to bring down inflation really is by severe economic pain and investors a lot in a lot of denial. And you know what was funny? All these investors were saying, don't fight the Fed in 2020 and 2021, uh, you know, when they're printing money like crazy, when they lowered interest rates to zero. But now they're trying to fight the Fed now and they're trying to start and they're trying to fight the banks now. It doesn't make much sense to me, everyone. So everyone, I know what you're thinking. Well, okay, what does all this economic jargon mean for you in simple terms? What that means is, everyone, we aren't anywhere close to a central bank pivot, and you don't want to, or I'm not going to jump into the market until I actually see the central banks cut interest rates, not slow interest rate hikes, not pause when they start cutting. I think that will be the time when to jump back in. But they've told us there's not going to be any cuts in 2023 at all. Do I believe everything they say? No, I don't. I take it with a grain of salt, but it's looking like inflation is entrenched and it's going to be higher for longer. Again, the economic data is already showing that these high interest rates are starting to have big effects on the economy. And if you think it's bad now, buckle up, ladies and gentlemen, because it's going to get even worse in 2023. I think we'll enter an official recession. We're going to see retail sales collapse worse than this report we got here. We will start to see the unemployment rate tick up and we'll start to see manufacturing output and GDP crash. So what I'm doing is I'm just still dollar cost averaging into gold and silver as a hedge against stagflation risk. And I'm waiting patiently. Again, sometimes you may have to wait a year, two years for the markets to bottom. Again, I'm waiting for about that 35% decline in the S&P uh, to jump back in there. And I'm waiting for Bitcoin to hit around 12, 14,000. And that's why I'm just building cash on the sidelines, being patient here. At least you can get some interest uh, on your money now. I saw uh, here in Australia, some banks were offering 4.5%. So yes, why it's lower than inflation, well, it's better than losing 20% uh, per year to your stocks or losing 50% uh, per year to your cryptocurrency. But everyone, what do you think about all of this? Let me know down below. Now, for all my loyal viewers and subscribers to watching, you're awesome. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all in the next video.